This is Venice Mabansak, a baby born in Manila on November the 15th of 2022 who became the world's 8 billionth person. And that's not the last billion we'll reach. In about 13 years, it's said we'll hit 9 billion, and it'll keep growing and growing and growing. Some people worry about overpopulation and running out of resources and all of that. And at the same time, people like Elon Musk, having his 10th child, are saying low birth rates are the real problem. But today, it doesn't really matter who's right, because I'm going to take you to an alternative universe where we reduce the population by 7 billion, leaving only 1 billion people on Earth. What would it mean for the environment, climate change, economy, and everyday life? Well, we'll figure that out together. But before we do that, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on a new video coming next week. And now, without wasting any time, let's jump right into it. Now let's take a look at our world about 200 years ago. The global population was only about 1 billion. Yes, that's right, it was around the year 1800, but the world was totally different back then. It was a time of simplicity, actually. There were fewer cities, and those that did exist were much smaller and less crowded, obviously. There were no cars, no airplanes, and most people lived in rural areas. Factories and mass production were not widespread yet, but people back then didn't need huge restaurant chains or international companies making stuff. Life moved at a slower pace by today's standards, but for them, that was just fine. With only about 1 billion people, there wasn't the same demand for goods and services that we see today. Communities were more self-sufficient, relying on local farms and artisans. The limited population meant there was less pressure on resources and less need for the massive infrastructure we have now. And if we take you right now from our time to that time period, you'll definitely notice some big differences in how you feel. In short, the air would be much more clean, you wouldn't have to deal with the smog or exhaust fumes we're so used to today, and the air would likely smell of nature, like fresh grass and blooming flowers. Honestly, it's difficult to imagine that feeling, because even the air in a remote forest today doesn't compare to the clean air in towns back then. The skies would be clearer as well, the stars more visible at night, and the overall feeling would be one of natural freshness and vitality. So does it mean that if today we reduce the population to 1 billion people, it would solve all the environmental problems? Well, not really, but it would definitely help with some things. To make sense of it all, let's break it down. We'll begin with global warming and climate change. You know, our planet is getting warmer every year, and it's a bigger deal than a lot of people realize. So would reducing the population make things go backwards? Well first, let's figure out why we even have this problem in the first place. It all happens because we produce a lot of gases that trap heat within the Earth's atmosphere. These gases cause climate change, which includes global warming and other changes like crazy weather patterns, melting ice caps, and rising sea levels. We've known about these problems for quite a while. Scientists began noticing the effects of global warming in the mid-20th century, but it's only in the last few decades that the evidence has become overwhelming. Rising temperatures, more frequent extreme weather events, and melting polar ice have made it clear that climate change is real and happening now. The main reasons behind these problems are things that we do each and every day. We burn fossil fuels like coal and oil and gas for energy, which releases a lot of carbon dioxide. We cut down the forests, which means fewer trees to absorb all that carbon dioxide. Farming, especially raising livestock, releases a lot of methane, another powerful greenhouse gas, and our factories and manufacturing processes also release a bunch of greenhouse gases. Cars, trucks, planes, and ships all burn fossil fuels too, adding even more pollution. Even our trash contributes, because landfills produce methane when waste decomposes. So, as you may guess, if we reduce the population to 1 billion, it would definitely help. But let's say you're lucky enough to be one of those billion. With fewer people, we'd have a less population, less trash, and less pressure on natural resources. You may see fewer trees getting cut down, cleaner rivers and lakes, and a drop in greenhouse gas emissions. But how long would you have to wait to see these changes? Well, some improvements could happen really quickly. For example, air quality would improve within a few weeks if there were fewer emissions from cars and factories. 
you would also notice more clear skies and fresher air pretty soon. Water in your tap could also start to improve within months as less pollution flows into rivers and lakes, but it wouldn't fix everything. For example, cars. If those 1 billion people all drive gas-guzzling cars, we'd still have a lot of pollution. It's like this. Right now, with 8 billion people, the situation is terrible. And with 1 billion, it would be less terrible, but still bad. The greenhouse gases we've already released would stick around for decades, so you wouldn't see immediate changes in climate, and it could take centuries for the climate to stabilize, even with a smaller population. In short, if people don't change how they live, even 1 billion of us would still cause many of the same problems. And what about the global economy? Well, first off, businesses wouldn't need to operate on a global scale anymore. Think about all those huge international corporations. With fewer people, they wouldn't need to be everywhere. They'd have to cut down on their operations, which means reducing their budgets and scaling back their presence around the world. Governments would face similar problems. Fewer people meant fewer taxpayers, and with a smaller population, there wouldn't be as much tax revenue coming in. This would hit government budgets hard, because taxes are a major source of funding for public services like schools, hospitals, and infrastructure, and it could also lead to higher taxes on the remaining population or finding new ways to generate revenue. But here's the thing. Even with fewer people, the demand for goods and services would still be high. People do still need food, housing, healthcare, and all the essentials. If businesses can't keep up with the demand, we could face shortages or higher prices. It's a tricky balance. Also, think about jobs. With fewer people, there might be more job opportunities. But if businesses cut back too much, it could lead to fewer jobs in some industries. It's a double-edged sword. More opportunities in some areas, but less economic diversity overall. And let's not forget about global politics. Countries with large populations often have more influence because they have bigger economies and more people to support their military. But if we cut the population down to 1 billion, the whole balance of power around the world would change. Trade deals, alliances, and even conflicts would change because the needs and capacities of countries would change as well. There would be less need for massive imports and exports since fewer people means less consumption. Countries may focus more on self-sufficiency, producing what they need locally instead of relying so much on global trade. But on the flip side, there could be problems with keeping the peace. With fewer people and potentially fewer resources being used, there might be competition over the remaining valuable resources. Countries could still find themselves in conflicts over things like water, minerals, and arable land. So while it might lead to a more balanced global stage, it wouldn't be without its problems. At that moment, it seems like such a world would balance between pros and cons for us. But now let's have a closer look at your everyday life and how it would change in more detail. We'll get into that in just a moment. But before we do, there's no better time to hit that like button and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Your support is the most important thing that keeps the content coming. So make sure you've done those simple things and let's move on. I've already mentioned the cleaner air, the fresher water, and the more open spaces, which all sound great, but would that cleaner air come at a cost for you? With fewer people, there would be less demand for a wide variety of products. You'd see fewer brands and less variety in the stores, and your favorite niche products would disappear. Everything would become more standardized. I know we're talking about specific details, and they may seem petty, but we're also talking about everyday life here, and these kinds of changes would be even more noticeable for you. Imagine that you simply can't find lactose-free milk for your daily coffee anymore. And if you're vegan, for example, it would be a nightmare for you. Because finding specialized items like vegan cheese and plant-based meats would be so much more difficult. Entertainment options would change too. Fewer people means a smaller audience, so there would be less content like movies, TV shows, and video games. Your streaming services wouldn't have as many new releases, and you'd have to wait much longer for new seasons of your favorite shows. Even tech products wouldn't roll out as frequently. No more getting the latest iPhone every year. 
Companies would slow down their release schedules because there wouldn't be as many customers to buy the new models every year. I mean, honestly, it would be all about stagnation. With fewer people, the pace of technological advancement would likely slow down. Big projects like space missions, large-scale infrastructure developments, and scientific research all rely on collaboration and resources of many people and nations. With a drastically smaller population, we'd see fewer breakthroughs and less innovation. For example, space missions require massive funding and a lot of specialized talent. It could set us back by decades in our quest to explore and potentially colonize other planets. And thinking about the psychological aspect, the reduced variety in entertainment and goods would also affect your mental well-being. Having fewer choices can make life feel monotonous and less stimulating. The slower pace of technological advancements and fewer big discoveries may lead to a sense of stagnation or frustration for all those who thrive on innovation and progress. But how long would it really take to get back to today's numbers? Well, it all depends on a lot of factors. Right now, the global population grows by about 1% every year, but with a much smaller population, that growth rate would be slower because there would be fewer people to have children. For example, at a rate of 0.5% per year, it could take about 300 to 400 years to go from 1 billion back to 8 billion and maybe even longer. During that time, we'd have to adapt to living in a less populated world. As the population gradually increases, we'd see improvements in variety and convenience again, but it would take a long time. So, while we could eventually restore the population, it would take a lot of time and effort. Tell me in the comments below if you'd like to live in such a world. And what if we did the opposite and imagined a world with double the population? About 16 billion people. Let me know if you'd like to see that. And for more mind-blowing what-if scenarios, click on this video and jump into a world where the internet shuts down forever. Thanks for watching. I'm going into that video and I'll be waiting for you there.